We're live. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to this uh, planning meeting in Hyman Borough Council on the 24th of the 2nd, 2020. Uh, can I ask each councillor to introduce yourself? Uh, I'll, I'll just say your name and then you repeat your name and the ward you represent, please. I'll go down the list. Uh, I'm Councillor Dave Parkins. I represent Huncourt Ward and uh, I'll be chairing this meeting this afternoon. Uh, Councillor Lorraine Cox. Hello, my, I'm Lorraine Cox, Councillor Lorraine Cox, Church Ward. Thank you. Councillor Judith Addison. Councillor Judith Addison, Emmanuel Ward, Oswald Twistle. Thank you. Councillor Jean Battle. Jean Battle, I represent Church Ward. Thank you. Councillor Steve Button. Councillor Steve Button. I'll come back. Councillor Stuart Eaves. Councillor Stuart Eaves, St Andrews Ward, Oswald Twistle. Councillor Abdul Khan. Councillor Abdul Khan, representing Centre Ward, Member Planning Committee. Thank you. Councillor Kath Pratt. Councillor Kath Pratt, member for, member for the Planning Committee, Councillor for Baxendon Ward. Thank you. Councillor Paddy Short. Short. Councillor Paddy Short, uh, representing Peel. Thank you. Councillor Kate Walsh. Councillor Kate Walsh, uh, Rishton Ward. Thank you. Councillor Terry Hearn. Councillor Terry Hearn, Councillor for Baxendon. Thank you very much. Councillor June Harrison. Councillor June Harrison, Barnfield Ward. Thank you. Councillor Melissa Fisher. Apologies, I think I was on mute then. Councillor Melissa Fisher, representing Clayton Limoys. Thank you, Melissa. I'll go back to Councillor Steve Button. No, OK. Uh, item one on the agenda. We'll go on to the agenda now. Item one on the agenda. It's apologies for absence, substitutions, declarations of interest and dispensations. Thanks, Chair. Um, we have apologies from Councillor Eamon Higgins and therefore Councillor Dave Parkins is in the chair for this meeting. And we've got in attendance Councillor Lorraine Cox, who is substituting for Councillor Eamon Higgins. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Miss Lyles. Uh, item two on the agenda. Could I have a mover for the minutes of uh, 20th of <laughs> January 2021 for approval as a correct record? I move, I move. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second them. All in favour? Any yeah. against? Any abstentions? Thank you very much for that. Councillor Kate Walsh, have you got your hand up? Hi, hi. Yeah, sorry. It was uh, it was for the last point. Actually, I don't think you saw my hand raised. Um, I just wanted to declare an interest, if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, no problem. Carry on. Uh, so, I'd like to declare an interest on item three D, as my employer is in the process of leasing one of the units in the market hall. So, I won't um, be speaking, and I will be abstaining from that vote. <coughs> Thank you very much. Right, item three on the agenda. It's the Town and Country Planning Act, planning applications for determination. Uh, 3A is application number 11 stroke 200470, Birdmoor Stud Farm, Plantation Road. Before uh, I bring uh, Mr. Jordan Guy in, Mr. Hartley, uh, I'll just give you the uh, performer of the meeting of this application. Uh, I, I shall bring you in after Mr. Guy has explained the, uh, the uh, application. Okay. Mr. Guy, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. So, um, this is um, an application uh, for permission in principle um, for the change of use and conversion of a vacant stable block into one dwelling. Uh, the other buildings within the site would remain a stable in use. Uh, no further details have been provided in terms of how many bedrooms or overall layouts and garden curtilage. Uh, the application site comprises of a C-shaped stable block constructed of natural stone uh, located on a parcel of land off Plantation Road and around 330 metres to the east of Owl Hall uh, with, and it's within the defined countryside area on the edge of Accrington. Uh, the site has a number of buildings present associated with stabling and the surrounding area is predominantly rural and densely populated with trees and with a number of residential dwellings. Um, permission in principle is an alternate consent route for obtaining planning permission and separates the considerations of matters of principle from technical details such as access mm. and highways, design, impact and amenity, ecology, etc. Uh, these matters would be assessed on a separate technical details application uh, the application before us today um, is to assess whether the principle of converting a stable in a countryside location into a, into a dwelling would satisfy policy. Uh, the policy in question is policy DM34 of the Development Management DPD and in particular sections 4 to 6. Uh, section 4 states that the conversion of existing buildings for residential use in both Greenbelt and countryside areas will be permitted where a traditional building exists of permanent and substantial construction as demonstrated by a structural survey. Uh, no more than 50% rebuild in excluding the roof and is capable of being ex uh, converted without substantial extensions over and above that certain paragraph three, which is kind of a 50% uh, rule and volume. Um, the building is a traditional style, uh, structurally sound uh, and would not require a structural survey as it is in a state um, which would not require a substantial re rebuild. Uh, in any case this is something which would be covered by building regulations uh, no details have been submitted stating that any extensions would be added at this time, but the building is of a size which should be adequate for a dwelling to meet the nationally described space standards. Uh, and then section five uh, just talks about um, extensions. Uh, and as mentioned, there are no extensions proposed. Uh, and then section six uh, is concerned with uh, any heritage assets within the area uh, and there are no buildings within the prox proximity with any special uh, heritage listings. Uh, in light of all of this, it is considered that the basic principle of the conversion of this building within a countryside location uh, would be acceptable as it conforms with the relevant parts of policy DM34. All other matters such as highways, access, ecology and trees, design and amenity shall be assessed at the technical detail stage. Um, love that. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much, Mr. Guy. Uh, I shall bring in now uh, Mr. Hartley. A very warm welcome to this committee, Mr. Hartley. Uh, when when you're ready, you can uh, do your presentation, sir. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. I sometimes it it clicks me out of the meeting, and then if it if it ha happens, I can get back in within seconds. But hopefully that won't happen. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, well, my name's Stephen Hartley and I, I, I represent the applicant who, who owns the, the property. It's, it's not for a new building, of course, this. It's for the conversion of a, an existing single storey building, as you've seen. It's set back from Plantation Road and there are trees and things round about it. So it's, it's not intrusive in the landscape. It's stone built and it fits well with the character and appearance of the surrounding area. It is unused but it's structurally very sound and it would convert very very easily to a dwelling and more importantly I think and as you've heard it's 
conversion meets council policy. There are no objections from county highways. And it's interesting that in 2009, and just further down the road at Owl Hall, there was an appeal which was allowed to refurbish the hall and the cottage and to create an extra two dwellings. And the inspector concluded, so far as the access is concerned, that while Plantation Road is used by both pedestrians and drivers, it was, in his opinion, satisfactory because traffic speeds are very low, because of its cobbled surface, and because oncoming vehicles are clearly visible well in advance. And the highway authorities come to the same conclusion about access regarding the current application. So I, I do think that deals with character and appearance and, and also access. Now, as, as you've heard, this type of application, a, a PIP application as it's called, comes in two stages. This is stage one, it just establishes the principle of the development. And stage two deals with all the technical details, including design. So the council would retain full control of all these matters. And in a sense, this stage one is like an old fashioned outline application used to be. If the principle of the development is approved today, we'd want to work closely with your officers, especially on matters of design, so that the building continues to be appropriate to the character and appearance of the area. So I, I hope with what I've said that you can be assured that that would be the case, and I hope that you can approve the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr Hartley. Uh, I'll open it up to the committee now. Uh, is there any comments on what Mr Guy has presented or Mr Hartley, please? You take the photograph downtown. Any comments? Could I have a, a mover for the officer's recommendations, please? I move it, Dave. Who's that? Jane. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second it. Anyone? All in favour? Yeah. 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 I'll just ask anyone against and any abstentions. That application is uh, is moved and passed. Thank you. Chair, just before we go on to the next item, I just want to say that Stephen Button has now joined the meeting and he did at 3.41. OK, thank you very much, Miss Lyles. Right, the... Uh, 3B, the next item on the agenda, planning application 11 stroke 20045 all. Land to the rear of Lower Hill House Farm, Higergate, Close, Uncourt. And could I call on Mr. David Morris to present the application, please? Chair, Chair I think um, I'm doing this one actually. I'll, uh, I'll take members through it. Um, planning permission is sought for the development of a, two, a detached two-storey dwelling on land to the rear of Lower Hill Farm on a plot of land between Lower Gate Road and Higher Gate Close. The main access to the site would be from Higher Gate Close. The plot of land is within the urban boundary and officers have worked closely with the applicant to ensure that development does not impact on local amenity or the privacy of neighbours. The proposed dwelling is two-storey and would be constructed of stone with well-proportioned windows and doors. Although the proposed house is an area of mixed house types with bungalows on the higher gate close, there are also two-storey houses in proximity to the site. Although a number of concerns have been raised about the additional house, which are addressed in the report, it is considered that the proposed house will make a positive contribution to the area and the development complies with the policies of the development plan and should therefore be supported and subject to the conditions set out in the report. I'll briefly just take you through the through the slides. So this is the location plan showing the location of the site in red. It's sandwiched between um, uh, Lowergate Road and Highgate Close. 
a more detailed plan showing the proposed dwelling in blue with the access off higher gate close. These are the elevations of the proposed dwelling showing the stone construction with slate roofs. This is a, some sections illustrating how it relates to neighbouring development. There's some photographs of the site. This is from Higergate Close, taken this morning. That's, this is where the access will be. View down Higergate Close, the access will be approximately where the Harris fencing is to the right. And a view from Highgate Road. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Chair, you're just on mute. Mm -hmm. Apologies for that. I'll say it again. Thank you, Mr. Pridor. Uh, is, I'll open it up to the committee now. Uh, is there any uh, observations, any questions on this application, please? Nothing? Uh, I'll, I'll go to the vote. All in favour? Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Could, I, could I have a mover for the application, please? I'll move I'll it. it. I'll second it. Chair, I think Councillor Judith Addison what had a hand up then. I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I did have my hand carry up. On, carry on, carry uh, on. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it's not really vital, but I... I did have my hand up just before you said we'll go to the vote. Yes. Sorry, Jude, uh, my fault. Uh, all I wanted to say was I noticed that the residents on Higergate Close were saying that this new dwelling would be out of place because they're uh, modern single story bungalows. But um, the, the bungalows on Higergate Close are quite new themselves. They were only built in the 1990s, if not later. So I, I think that the you know, the old farm buildings uh, that we're talking about at the other side, you know, that uh, this proposed new house would, would be between the old and the new. So I wouldn't see it as out of context because it's matching with the old buildings that may have been in some form there in some form for hundreds of years. And I think perhaps it might be more pleasant to look at as well, having a, a nice house there than that farm building that we saw uh so that was just what I wanted to say, an observation. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Addison. Uh, anyone, anyone else want to comment before it's been moved and seconded with the application? All in favour? Anyone against? No. No, I, I'm, I'm going to abstain on this application. I'll abstain on the abstention in, OK? That application has been uh, accepted. Thank you very much. Item 3C, planning application 11 stroke 20 stroke 0456, Mercer Hall, Queen Street, West Harwood. Simon, can you, can you come in again? Sorry, Mr. Pridoff. Mr. Pridoff. Thank you, Chair. Planning permission is sought for the remodelling of the area to the front of Mercer Hall in Great Harwood to create a public seating and to enhance Mercer Hall. The site is in the Great Harwood Conservation Area and it is proposed to resurface the square in natural sawn stone flags, relocate the seats so they are closer to the building and to the side of the square. The three new trees with the retention of the two existing trees will be planted. The council's conservation area offers 
developer has worked with the applicant on this proposal and believes that the new scheme represents a substantial improvement over the existing schemes and aligns more closely with the Great Howard Conservation Area Management Plan. The scheme preserves and enhances the character and appearance of the conservation area and the setting of Mercer Hall. And for these reasons, it is recommended that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions in the report. I'll just take you through a few uh, pictures of the development. I think most of you will know the location of the site in the centre of Great Harwood. It's outlined in red on the plan. Again, the general arrangement of the proposed development. Most of the area would just be flagged using natural stone. The seats repositioned around the edge and closer to the uh, to the hall itself. Is a an artist's impression of what it might look like in the future. The trees will be planted in quite large pits just to make sure they survive. And a couple of photographs just to remind you of what Mercer Hall in the air at the front currently looks like. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that presentation, Mr. Uh, Prido. Uh, is there any uh, comments on the application, please? Councillor Pratt. Um, whilst this scheme, it seems to be good at first glance, it appears to me that it is somewhat prem premature with the Leisure Trust proposals to redevelop this, the interior of the building. Surely it would be better to defer this application until after the renovation work has been decided. Is that it, Councillor Pratt? That, yeah. That's my comment. Yes, thanks, Dave. Mr. Priddo, would you like to reply? Um, well, the, the applications before us for determination, um, the in, inside of the building isn't readily visible from the outside, but uh, uh, I, I don't think the outside scheme would really have a significant impact on uh, future proposals. My concern is that the works on the interior will severely damage the outside while they're being done with all the scaffolding and whatever's proposed. Mr. Prudor. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's a good I think it's a good scheme, but I think it I think it should, could wait. I think at the moment it's difficult to say because we don't know what the proposals are for the inside of the building yet. And I don't think that should stop us from determining this application. I, I think, I think, uh, Councillor Pratt, uh, that uh, we should. I understand your comments, but uh, we should look at what's in the application today, and uh, look at that. And at a later date, obviously, it'll come forward for the internal of the of the hall itself. I think it's wasting money. Well, that, that that's your opinion. It is. Uh, could I have a any, anyone else? Anyone else to? Uh, Comment, please. Councillor Melissa Fisher. Yeah, Councillor Fisher. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, whilst I understand what um, Councillor Pratt is saying, I think regardless of what happens to, to the building, um, am I right in thinking that it, it's actually listed from the front? So there'll be no significant changes to the front of the building, regardless as to what actually happens inside. So I think any development outside... Uh, can only be a positive thing, regardless of how the, the building is repurposed. That's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fisher. Uh, yes. Next one, please. Kath Pratt, can you put your hand down, please, Councillor Pratt, or do you want to speak? Well, Councillor Stephen Button. Carry on, uh, Councillor Button. Hi, yeah, um, yeah. Just moving um, forward from what Melissa said, I agree with Melissa. I think um, 
what we've got to remember is this is planning. So if we pass it, doesn't mean to say that any of the work's going to go ahead. Because um, I think bear in mind, obviously, the work that would be done, we wouldn't want it to be damaged um, by any further alterations on the inside. So if the planning gets passed, am I right, um, Mr. Predo, in thinking the planning would stand for two years afterwards? So that they've got time to, to do the internal work if need be before they do the outside work. Don't you reply, Mr. Prido, please. Thank you, Chair. The the recommended conditions include condition one, which gives three years for commencement of development. So there will be three years to start. If I could just clarify a point that was raised earlier, that the building isn't um, on the national listings. It is a locally listed building, but it's still within a conservation area. And clearly the, the external facade and appearance of the building are very striking and an important feature that we'd want to protect. So, uh, But it's not it's not actually a, a listed building in the same way that the market hall is a listed building. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Prido. Any more comments? Good yeah. Yes, no comment. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, as the build, as the building uh, is listed, building had it not been listed, I would have supported CAF on this. But since it's a listed building, I would go go along with the committee. I'll go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, thanks, Mr. Khan. Any more questions? Can I have a refer to the application? I will, Chair. Can I have a second, please? I'll second it, Dave. All in favour? Anyone against? No. I'll, I'll abstain, Dave, I think. It might be wiser to, from what I've said. OK, thank you. Uh, that, that application is, is passed. Thank you. Uh, item 3D on the agenda, 11 stroke 20 stroke 0182, land adjacent to the market hall and the pavilions, Field Street, Beckerington. Mr. Prado again, please. Thank you, Chair. Planning permission and consent for demo demolition of an unlisted building is sought. Uh, for the redevelopment of the area immediately to the east of the Market Hall in Accrington Town Centre. The aim of the scheme is to open up the Market Hall building and create a larger area of car park and public realm adjacent to that building. Patronage of the outdoor market has been, de been declining in recent years and this would allow the market to be better focused on the remaining outdoor area and inside the Market Hall. The eastern elevation of the Grade 2 listed Market Hall is the second most important elevation of the building after the front elevation facing the recently completed square. The scheme will continue the improvements made to the areas in front of the town hall and market hall and increase the size of the car parking area, thus allow more people to readily access the town centre and the market. A number of representations have been made on the proposed development and these are addressed in the report before you. The council's conservation officer has worked with the applicant on the proposed development and is satisfied that the scheme preserves and enhances the character and appearance of the conservation area and the setting of the listed market hall. For these reasons, it is recommended that the proposed development is supported subject to the conditions set out in the report. And I'll just take you through the slides. So I think most of you will know where the uh, location of the development is and the pavilions that uh, will be removed. There's a more detailed plan of the site. That's a plan illustrating the proposed layout of the car park. And some photographs of the pavilions to be removed. Thank you, Chair.
Thank you, Mr. Pr Thank you, Mr. Prido. Uh, I'll open it up to the committee. Any comments, please? Councillor Terry Hearn. Um, thanks, Councillor Barkson. Um, the, the, I take it this is the removal of the fish market and the stores along the side there to, to the market. And bearing in mind that that fish stall is the only wet fish store we have in the town centre, um, what provision has been made to um, move this or where to put it? Because <clears throat> as a wet fish market, it, um, it does bring in quite a considerable amount of trade into the town. And it's not something I'd like to see lost from, from the town centre, particularly from the market hall. Um, has any, anything been uh, decided on where, where it's to be repositioned? Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Uh, Mr Pridor, please. Yes, that's an interesting point. I don't have any details in relation to the fish market itself. Um, David Morris is with us, who uh, is the case officer. I don't know whether he wants to add anything in relation to the potential future layout. Um, Mr Chair, um, I don't know the answer to that precise question, but what I do know is the general strategy is to move the existing stalls into the uh, main market hall. But uh, it's really a management uh, issue for the market rather than a planning issue. So I'm afraid I don't know the answer. Uh, can I just uh, bob in there and just say, well, is it possible to get to know ASAP what's happening to the relocation as uh, Councillor Hearn wants to know, please? Uh, we'll try and do that. Thank you very much, Mr. Morris. Councillor Harrison. Yes, it is only the first part of the uh, the section coming down, isn't it? Not the second part, just the first part. It isn't all coming down, is it? 